Hi, this is Matthew Ho. Um, I appreciate being invited uh, to give my testimony here. Um, this is a pretty uh, somber uh, point to reflect upon. Uh, I was uh, born in 1973. I graduated high school in 1991. So I was um, 15, 16 years old when the Berlin Wall fell. And this is certainly not the world we were supposed to have had. Uh, I was asked tonight to speak about Afghanistan and specifically Afghans as pawns. Uh, and the Afghan war uh, begins in the 1970s. And so the Afghan war is, uh, it begins during the Cold War. But as it still continues, that still goes on, it's a living legacy of the Cold War. Uh, in the 1970s, the, Af uh, the Afghan government, uh, you know, depending upon which perspective you want to look at, they were playing off the Soviets versus the Americans or the Americans and the Soviets were trying to gain, um, you know, uh, uh, leverage uh, within Afghanistan. But not throughout the 1970s, you see in Afghanistan, uh, all degrees of American and Soviet influence as uh, each nation tries to curry favor with the Afghans. And uh, at one point, the, so the, excuse me, the Afghan uh, prime minister says something along the lines of, I light my American cigarettes with Soviet lighters, uh, you know, recognizing, you know, that this, this relationship between the three. Uh, the series of events that soon turns this competition into uh, into revolution and into violence and into usur usurpation um and then of course the invasion by the soviet union in december of 1979 it's important to note that prior to that invasion a lot of people like to think that that is the beginning of the soviet afghan war it's really not it, it's soviet afghan war, the afghanistan by the time the soviets invade in december of 79 uh, has already had about a hundred thousand dead uh, in fighting before the Soviets entered the war. And as many people know, uh, as Zygmunt Brzezinski has explained, uh, Bob Gates has explained, the United States was funding uh, insurgent groups in Afghanistan uh, at least six months prior to the Soviet invasion. Zygmunt Brzezinski, of course, very famously said he wanted to bait the Soviet Union into invading Afghanistan to give them their own Vietnam. Uh, here we are now, of course, in 2021, and Afghanistan, its people are still living through that nightmare. Uh, the suffering has been uh, uh, immense for 40 some odd years, uh, and the entire country has been devastated in some way. Uh, even even parts of the country that have not seen violence in the last 20 years are still dealing with the um, the scars, the trauma, uh, the the uh, fallout from the previous violence that enveloped them. Um, and of course, much of the country has only seen violence for the last 40 years. There are parts of the country that have not known, um, you know, a single month to go by in 40 years where there hasn't been some form of violence or uh, severe oppression uh, by uh, the government, by warlords, by militias, et cetera. So it has been a, a living nightmare uh, for the Afghan people. And for us as Americans, the role we're playing that is, is of course, we're the ones who uh, orchestrated it. Uh, the United States is responsible uh, for this uh, catastrophe of the Afghan people. Uh, we have kept it going we have sustained it. Um, and what you see in Afghanistan in relation to the Cold War is that it is a mirror of it. It, it, it is this living legacy of the Cold War reflects the Cold War. And it shows America, uh, the United States, uh, in its worst image possible. Um, what you see is the United States going from the crusade against communism to the crusade against radical Islam, really, right? Which is really just a, 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 a crusade, a war against Muslim nations. Um, you see the killing. Um, millions of Afghans 
have died over these last 40 years. Tens of, tens of millions of lives there have just been, to have just been uh, ruined. Um, Afghans, Afghans for, for, for decades were the large worldless refugee population. Uh, they were only surpassed in number of refugees by the Syrians, a, a, another war um, the United States is very responsible for uh, implement, you know, starting the war and sustaining that war. Um, and now as the Syrians have started to go home, Afghans, I believe, are again the largest uh, refugee group in the world. Uh, Anti-democracy, we, 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 United States um, likes to herald its credentials as the world's oldest democracy and as sending its men and women abroad to defend and fight for it and spread democracy. And what we have seen just as in the Cold War, just as in you know places like Korea, Indonesia, Philippines, et cetera, um, repressive, corrupt, uh, thuggish governments uh, have been put in place. You know, look at south of the United States, Mexico, all the way south to Chile, um, throughout the Cold War, uh, in one place or another, there were these authoritarian, undemocratic, human rights violating governments that the United States uh, were not only allies with, but kept in power, provided military assistance to, uh, you know, oftentimes put in power via coups. You have this in Afghanistan. The Afghan government is uh, one of the most corrupt governments in the world. Uh, you know, Transparency International routinely ranks it in you know the top three or four corrupt, most corrupt governments in the world. It is uh, every election in Afghanistan since the United States invasion and occupation, um, particularly since the election in 2009, has been incredibly fraudulent. Um, you know, it's in 2014, the presidential election was so fraudulent that um, an extra constitutional solution had to be uh, implemented. Uh, you know, he, basically, John Kerry at the time, the US, United States Secretary of State goes there and creates a new form of government for the Afghans because it, they're deadlocked because, again, the elections are so fraudulent. This has continued. Uh, Ashraf Ghani, the president, both elections he has won um, are uh, just just absolute forces. Uh, and then the same occurs for the parliamentary elections as well. The level of, 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 of uh, fraud is uh, immense. Um, yet we claim we are there to help the Afghan people support themselves. We claim when we speak about why we can't pull our troops out of Afghanistan, that we have to have our troops there in order to protect the government in order to strengthen the Afghan government, because that is a government of law uh, and democracy uh, and, you know, couldn't be farther from the truth, of course. Uh, the same goes with human rights. Uh, the United States uh, supported human rights violators. Uh, was a human rights violator itself all throughout the Cold War. Um, that legacy carries on through Afghanistan. Um, you, you see it, whether it is the fact that uh, all the Afghan security forces, whether it be the intelligence service, the military, the police, whatever, all torture as a matter of routine. That is reported every other year uh, by, by the U.N., uh, nothing changes. The United States doesn't even acknowledge that. You see that with uh, the victimization of women. Uh, the Taliban, of course, were brutal uh, in, in their treatment of women. The Afghan government, um, maybe not as publicly brutal, but women um, in Afghanistan still suffer terribly. Uh, the rates of suicide among Afghan women are the highest in the world. Uh, Health care availability for women is still incredibly low. Uh, it is still a misogynist uh, nation and the United States supports that. Uh, and, and of course, you've had all kinds of various uh, scandals, you, you, the, the, the sexual trafficking um, of young uh, of men and boys by warlords that the United States keeps in power uh, with its troops and its money, um, you know, has been exposed over and over again. Uh, you hear a lot of American veterans speak uh, about that. Uh, the other aspect, too, of course, is the drug trade. Uh, you have uh, this explosion of opioid use uh, throughout the world, uh, devastated communities in Europe and in the United States. Uh, we had as high as 70, 80,000 people dying a year from uh, overdoses here in the United States over the last several years. 
at the same time, you have the resumption of Afghanistan as uh, the world's leading opiate producer or illicit opiate producer. Um, Afghanistan goes from, first of all, it was the, the, the CIA that brings the drug from India and Pakistan into Afghanistan in the 1980s in order to produce revenue to support the insurgency. OK, you then which is very similar to what both the French and the Americans did in Southeast Asia uh, during the Cold War, um, as well as to just being involved with the drug trade that goes back as well to the years after the Second World War, where the United States government, uh, you know, through the CIA was heavily involved with the Mediterranean drug trade in order to combat communism, uh, particularly in the port cities of Italy and southern France. Uh, so you have this complicity, th th this tie in, this relationship with uh, illicit drugs, with, nar you know, narcotics trafficking. Um, and of course, you have this wholesale slaughter of Americans via overdoses. Uh, you know, I can go on and on with these comparisons about how what was occurring in the Cold War transitions through and remains in Afghanistan. I think you know it just it just devast it just uh, devastatingly shows the bankruptcy, the moral bankruptcy of the United States. Uh, there is, uh, you know, I don't want to take much more time, uh, but Afghanistan is that living legacy of the Cold War. Uh, all the worst qualities of the United States, uh, the, 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 you know, representing it through the 20 to 30 million people killed in the U.S. of wars during the Cold War, uh, the, the support for authoritarian uh, regimes and dictatorships and thugs, uh, the ties with organized crime and drug trafficking, um, and then, of course, the human rights violations. Um, and then finally, you know, I just want to end this here with the lies, with the constant lies, the lies uh, that have extended, that extended all through the Cold War, as have been testified to uh, by so many of the great panelists uh, in this event, uh, but also, uh, you know, in Afghanistan, it is uh, a war that uh, begins with lies, you know, what else is covert action, you know, so the supplying of uh, the Afghan Mujahideen by the CIA before the Soviet Union even invades, you know, this starts with a lie. Um, and then, of course, after 2001, it's just sustained year after year with lies about whether it's about progress, whether it's about how many women, or how many girls are going to school, whether it's about whether the elections were free and fair, all those things were lies. And so now here we are, right? This living legacy of the Cold War still exists. And um, at this moment, Joe Biden is unsure what he wants to do about it. So thank you for allowing me to provide this testimony. Um, and thank you for your work with this uh, Truth Commission.